Post game is presented by SoFi. Break up with bad banking. Download the SoFi app. We're here to break this one down with Ryan Wilson and Bryant McFadden. Guys, interesting outcome here, and the means by which we got there was very interesting as well. I'll ask it this way, and BMAC, I'm going to go your way first here. Are the Chargers worse than we thought, or are the Jags that much better than we thought? The Jags, they're a lot better than what we all thought. I mean, we, we better start paying attention to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number one, they have coaching structure. And because of that, we're starting to see the talent, especially at the quarterback position, surface for them. And number two, defensively, they got some guys that put their hand in the dirt and they can go rush the passer. That defensive front, not just in today's ball game, but last week, they were phenomenal as well. So looking at what they have, as far as foundational pieces on their team, this is a team, especially in a wide open div division. The AFC South is pretty much wide open for them. Man, we better start paying attention to who the Jacksonville Jaguars are and what kind of damage they can cause, especially throughout the rest of their season. BMAC, you said it at the top. It starts with the coaching, and it's uh, it's night and day than where they were last year. And I think a lot of that has to do with Doug Peterson. Uh, our good friend Maggie uh, Gray, who works for the CBS Sports Radio family, tweeted this out right after the game, and it got my attention, Joe, and I'll just read it real quick. The Jags look awesome. Fair enough. They have back-to-back -back first overall picks, four top ten picks in the last four years, six first-round picks in the last three years, spent more than $100 million in free agency, and as BMAC noted, they hired a Super Bowl-winning coach. It has all come together. We could go... We said, okay, they stomped the Colts, but they always, some for some reason, beat the Colts in Jacksonville. This is a game that gets your attention. Now, listen, the Chargers are a team, that's what it looks like offensively when you don't have a franchise quarterback. Justin Herbert was at about 45%. You mentioned Bosa was out on the other side of the ball. They lost for Sean Slater, the left tackle. Keenan Allen didn't play because of a hamstring injury. Uh, excuses are for losers, but that's just the reality where that team is. I think the Chargers will be fine when they get healthy. But the bigger story is BMAC noted, this Jacksonville Jaguars team is for real. They're first place in that division. And look, man, Will Brinson said on the Pick 6 podcast, I laughed at him, they might win this division if we keep messing around and not taking them seriously. <laughs> uh, we don't need to take Will Brinson seriously, regardless of the outcome of this division or of this game. Uh, on the Chargers side of the ledger, guys, it's not maybe time to punt on this season just yet. Still a ton of talent on that field, but Joey Bosa goes down and maybe some of the other pass rushers on that vaunted defense get revealed for, you know, being aging. Khalil Mack specifically in that vein, but... It's interesting when you look at this Chargers team, guys, because so much was put out in front of them once again this season. The expectation was sky high. Were we wrong about not just this team, but maybe this division? As we take a look at the AFC West, everybody pretty much underperforming outside of, let's say, the Chiefs, who had a misstep here this week. But is it the Chiefs and then everybody else in a division that we thought would be highly contested, Ryan? b -Mac, you know the Bears won because Joe's slacking off the AFC West as we sit here. No, no, so, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I'm not willing to go that far, but so. <laughs> hey, but take I'm a look at the results. They speak for themselves. The AFC West. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I will give you this, though. The Raiders have been a huge disappointment. They, they have to find a way to get out of it. At 0-3, you're not going to the playoffs mm -hmm. unless something magical happens, and that hasn't happened yet in Las Vegas. As for the Chargers, we just sort of talked about this. Injuries are a huge issue, especially with your franchise quarterback. Trevor Lawrence was aspiring to be Justin Herbert. That's sort of the comp I gave him coming out uh, of Clemson, and he superseded what Justin Herbert was able to do on the field today Sunday. Obviously, the ribs had a lot to do with that, but I think once Herbert gets healthy, you get Keenan Allen back, you can either, even overcome some of those injuries on the other side of the ball defensively, but you can't do it when your quarterback's at 45 50%, and we saw the reasons why. And look, they lost to a really good Jaguars team. I'm not convinced that if Justin Herbert had been 100%, that game certainly would have been a lot closer. Maybe the Jags even still sneak it out in L.A., but I'm not worried about the AFC West in general, uh, only because Kansas City's still there. I think the Chargers will be fine. Questions about the Raiders, like I mentioned? And, look, we'll find out about the Broncos again tonight, primarily mm -hmm. with Nathaniel Hackett, and see if he's made any progress from the first two weeks. I'm kind of concerned. I think based on what I've seen so far in two weeks of play, I felt like this division playing out-of-division teams, they should be able to dominate. I do believe the Kansas City Chiefs will be there. I, I, I agree with you also, Ryan, in regards to the Chargers, especially when they get healthy with Justin Herbert and some of their other key, key players. But the Raiders... They're going in the wrong direction. I really thought that was one of my locks for this week. Just an outright win for the Raiders going to Tennessee. Defensively, they can't get any stops. They're not putting pressure on opposing quarterbacks like we thought they would be able to do. And their offensive line has been bad. 
And because of that, we're seeing bad play, inconsistent play from the quarterback because he's uncomfortable in the pocket. And we're not seeing the quarterback wide receiver relationship that we thought we were going to see with Adams and, and, and Carr because the offensive line has been pretty bad. I don't know how much improve they can get throughout the, the, the season, how, how, how much they would be able to improve. But I have concerns. And then, of course, the Denver Broncos. I mean, Nathaniel Hackett, he's the only rookie head coach that is looking like the, the, the lights are too bright for him. Mm. So in totality, I thought this division, I, I knew it was going to be a headache when you see division on division type ball games because of the personnel and the moves they made. But when you just talk about seeing AFC West team play play teams that are outside of the division, I thought they would take care of their business. Yeah, I, I did offer the qualifier, let the record show for the Chiefs. I still wholeheartedly believe in that team, but question marks definitely to be answered by the other teams in that decision or division. Excuse me. Uh, I want to talk about decision making here and specifically that uh, um, of Brandon Staley because it's coming to question here early on this season. His tendencies on fourth down, uh, sort of going against what he had done in seasons past. BMAC. When you see the franchise quarterback who had to take a shot in the ribs and then take a shot in the ribs to get out on the field and then took some shots in the ribs during the game, and he's in the game down 28 inside of two minutes, do you raise any concerns there? I don't like it. I don't like it. Man, you don't have to question how tough Justin Herbert is. And like you said, in the final moments of that ball game, it's over. It's over. Heck, it's safe to say when they scored that last t touchdown to make it 38, it was over. Why is he still in the ball game? And then also, too, you talked about the injuries going into the game for Justin Herbert. Everything he had to do just to get out there with his teammates. They only ran the ball 12 times. They only ran the ball for the entire ball game 12 times. 12 times. The score out after the first quarter was 0-0. You go into halftime down 16-7, and you only rush the ball 12 times with an injured quarterback? Come on, the game plan for me was mind-boggling. I didn't understand it. And you put your quarterback in harm's way, playing against a defensive team that got guys in their front that can rush the passer. I mean, 45 times passing attempts for Justin Herbert. I mean, it didn't make any sense. I felt like they should have tried to create balance. And Austin Eckler, you talk about a fantasy disappointment. He's been a reality disappointment as well in, in terms of the expectations for what he was supposed to do with everything he had surrounded. Four carries for five yards. Austin Eckler, four carries for five yards. Mm -hmm. Just the game plan was confusing for me. I'm with you, B-Mac. And, you know, the first two weeks, and we talked about this in week one, you and I, about how Brandon Staley – Went against the Brandon Staley grain of usually going for it on fourth and short or fourth and medium. Didn't do it in week one. Didn't do it in week two. And then we have the, the concerns here with leaving Justin Herbert in well past beyond his expiration date in terms of this game and them having a chance to win. It is curious. And, you know, the, the lights aren't too bright for Brandon Staley, as you called it, for Nathaniel Hackett. But you do wonder about some of the in-game decisions, not just from the Chargers, but across the league that, that make you scratch your head. You have 15, 20, 25 coaches, staff members, people in the, in the booth uh, that have eyes on the things that you need to get done, and it seems like things are falling through the cracks. So it, it's curious. I don't want to say the Chargers are going to charge it up like they always do. This is a really good football team. I picked them to win the Super Bowl. They have to get back to what they did last year when they were winning football games. If Staley needs to be more aggressive, he should be more aggressive. I'm not sure what happened between – January and the start of this season a few weeks ago, but he feels like a different coach. They need to, to focus this thing, get guys healthy, and get back to what they did a year ago with Justin Herbert, with Brandon Staley, and to be max point, with the running game where you leaned on Austin Eckler a lot more than we've seen so far this year. All right, next up for that side, perhaps get right game against the Texans, but here on Sunday, it's a loss to the Jags, and it is a road win and a sizable one at that, a 28 point road win which is the third largest road win in franchise history. Everything's coming up Jacksonville. More HQ coming next. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.